Hey, what's up, you guys? So, I have wanted to make this video for such a long time, and I've been talking about making it for such a long time. I never did it because I wanted to have the piercing for a substantial amount of time before I started giving my opinions and sharing my experience because I feel like when I was getting my septum pierced, anytime I went to watch a video that was like, septum piercings 101, it was just someone who was like, I got my septum pierced last week, and here's everything you need to know. And that's just not... They're helpful videos, don't get me wrong. They're super helpful, but, um... It's not, I don't feel like that's a substantial amount of time to really understand and experience everything there is to go with a piercing and I wanted to give myself a long time so I could really take notes and figure out everything about having the piercing, you know, so I can share it with you guys and um, anything you might need to know, things they don't tell you and so I have, I have a full page of notes here, full two pages essentially. Maybe like a page and a half. I'm going to leave a list of the topics and the timestamps of when those are covered over here. So if you're just here for a certain thing or a couple things, you can just skip to those parts. That's completely fine. I had also asked if you guys wanted several videos or if you just wanted one long video. 60% just wanted one really long video. 40% wanted separate videos. So I think I'm going to make two different videos. This one's going to be like the 101 sort of thing. And I'm going to make another one about the different kinds of jewelry and how to change it. Because I feel like that's a different thing all in itself like this video is for people who have either just gotten it pierced or want to get it pierced and then like the one for changing your septum ring is gonna be probably next week or upload at the end of this week so that um, people who already have it and are looking to change it and don't know how to change it can see that so this is kind of like the beginner's guide sorry for the super long intro let's do this so first I'm gonna go over the process of getting your septum pierced um, first thing that you have to do is find a reputable piercer. Has to be a good one because septums are one of those things that um, a lot of people can get wrong. You can go through the cartilage and that is not what is supposed to happen. The shop that I went to was Intricate Decor in Mount Pleasant. It's like right across from the movie theater and Applebee's and stuff. Uh, I get it done by Scott who works there. He's wonderful. I do not trust anyone else to put holes in my body. He's fantastic. We all love him. I take everybody to Scott. Mine cost $35, I believe. I think that was what it was, was $35. And then um, also make sure you leave a tip for their time. I did film the process of me getting it done and I'll have that clip playing up here. Um, I don't have the sound for it, but essentially what happens, I'm reading my notes, so I'm sorry I keep looking down. I just want to make sure I don't miss anything. First thing that's going to happen is your piercer is going to reach up your nose like this. It's feel around and feel for your sweet spot, just like this. It's going to feel a little awkward, but it's not that bad. Um, your sweet spot is basically a spot in your septum that has no cartilage, and that is where the piercing can go through. I think everybody can get their septum done, but maybe some people can't because of anatomy reasons. I don't, I don't know. Next thing that happens is they're going to clean the area that they're going to put your piercing in. It smells a little weird, it's kind of cold, and then they're going to get the clamp. The clamp is basically everybody's least favorite part of a piercing. The clamp has never bothered me too much, but I know some people are sensitive. And basically, what they're going to do is clamp your nose with the little clamp, and then they're going to like pull it up so that they can see and really get in there. And then they're just going to stuff the needle through. But after they stuff the needle through, then it's over. Mine didn't hurt hardly at all. Um, your eyes water, but that's just more of a reflex of getting a hole through pushed through your nose. I was super, super, super nervous and I winced a lot because I was just, I was panicking, but it was very quick, very painless, and um, that's something that I really appreciated about this piercing. Um, however, everybody is different. I've heard so many people say that it was the worst pain that they've experienced and then some people say that they didn't even feel it. I feel like if it was the worst pain that you've ever experienced, you probably got it pierced wrong. Um, so basically, after they get the needle through, he's gonna take the clamp off, go get the jewelry, put that through. That doesn't hurt really at all. It's a little awkward and like feels a little funny, but relatively painless. Relatively painless depending on the person, so. You know. One thing that I would say though is a lot of people like to keep their septum jewelry flipped up. If you are going to want or need to do that, tell your piercer, okay? If you have to have your piercing flipped up at any point in the healing process, you have to tell your piercer so they can make sure that they pierce it like in the right place. And also, they're going to need to bend 
the barbell, if you get if you get this kind, they're gonna need to bend this open because I have one like this, and do you see how narrow that opening is? It's impossible to flip up. And that's not really a huge issue for me because I haven't had a job where I've had to hide um, my piercings at all. I haven't had a reason that I've had to flip it up. So how you'd flip your septum up if you need to flip it up is if yours won't go forward, make this face go like that. And if it doesn't go up that way, keep making that face and just push. It might get stuck, but just keep pushing. Like just push it past the point and then it's up there and you can't see it at all and it's gone. And then when you need to pull it back down, make that face again, get your fingers in there and just pop it back out. It's super easy. Just make sure your piercer knows that you need to flip it up if you do, that way they can plan accordingly. They'll feel around for your sweet spot, they'll clean it, they'll clamp it, they'll pierce it, they'll put the jewelry in, and if you need your jewelry opened a little bit so that you can flip it up, tell your piercer. Got it? Great. Okay, now we're gonna get into aftercare and the healing process and all that fun stuff. The worst part of the entire piercing. So for me, while the piercing process was very tolerable and very quick and very painless, the healing process sucked a little bit. It only took maybe two or three weeks for it to stop sucking so much, but um, when it when it sucked, it sucked. The proper way to clean any piercing is to do the sea salt soaks two times a day. So for the sea salt soaks, what you're gonna wanna do is get non-iodized sea salt. Table salt will not work. Don't do that. What you're gonna wanna do is take a little bit of sea salt, put it in to some, I used distilled water through the process because I felt like it was cleaner. Um, put it into some distilled water that you've like boiled down, made it really hot, as hot as you can stand. Get some cotton balls or like a shot glass that you could stick your nose in and let it soak for a while. And then when you're done, get wet Q-tips and rinse the area off because you don't want it to be all salty up there. Afterwards, just make sure that you rinse it and dry it off nicely and all that. So you're going to want to do that in the morning and then at night before you go to bed. And then like throughout the day, I typically got some hot water and got those little crusties off, but I would not suggest cleaning it, like cleaning it, cleaning it too many times a day unless you like get something up your nose that you think is going to cause an infection, then by all means clean it again. But you don't need to clean it like eight times a day. Two times a day is going to be fine. Maybe three if you're anal about it, but for my piercing, I had a lot of stinging for two weeks. It's so like anytime my nose ran or I smelled something like acidic or something, I don't know why, but I would just get this really sharp stinging sensation that would last about 30 seconds to a minute right here, and it hurt really bad. So about two weeks was the amount of time that I was having pain, um, so that stinging was happening anytime I did anything with my nose. If I like made a weird face or anything like that, it would hurt. If my nose ran, it would hurt. If I had to do anything having to do with my nose, it would hurt. It was very tender for about two weeks. I couldn't really flip it up or do much with it. Um, I had to be really careful drying my face or washing my face because if I bumped it, it would hurt. You're not supposed to move the piercing very much to begin with. Anybody who says you have to move it a lot or the skin will grow around it. No, no. As long as you're cleaning it and it's getting like moisture in there and everything's fine, then you're fine. Um, but if you do have to move it, make sure that you get some warm water and you clean off around the piercing because when it heals, you're gonna get these horrible little crusties and it's just part of the healing process. But if those go inside your wound, ow! It's not comfortable, it hurts, it's miserable. I'm sorry that the lighting keeps changing. I forgot to change my white balance. It's an auto white balance right now and it keeps wanting to like, change between like being warm and cool and I'm I forgot to fix it I'm sorry I don't want to scare anybody with that though because the healing process is really easy once you get past those two weeks of the soreness and the stinging it's really nothing it's super easy super quick like easiest process for healing that I've ever had I believe the piercing is supposed to be fully healed in six to eight weeks and that's when you are able to change it um I just changed mine at home I don't think I had my piercer ever change my septum ring Pretty sure I didn't. When you do get it pierced, I got the shortest bar, which worked really well for me because I have a fairly small nose. And um, I also prefer it because it's harder to bump. If you have a really long one for the healing process, you're gonna hit it and you're gonna hit it and you're gonna hit it and you're gonna hit it. And that's gonna hurt. Okay, now we're gonna move on into after the healing process. 
Um, I really would not recommend flipping your piercing up until after it's healed or after those couple of weeks that already passed. I think about after two or three weeks you should be okay, but definitely wouldn't recommend messing with it or flipping it up too much as soon as you've got it pierced because that's just gonna cause problems for you. I understand that if you have to hide it um, from like your employer or your school or something like that, but I'm gonna try to get a video up on how to change your piercing um, by Friday or by next Wednesday, depending on when I can film it. I don't know when that's gonna happen, but um, I will leave a card up there when I have that up so that you guys can watch it. I'm gonna try to go really in depth there and make sure you guys get a nice close up of all my nose hairs and can see what's happening. But we can still get into the types of jewelry that you can get with your septum ring. That way you guys have a general idea if you want to. Um, the typical one is the horseshoe, which is what I have in right now. You can get them in different sizes, different colors. I'll go over different diameters and stuff in my next video about changing and stuff. Um, but I got mine, this is the one that I got mine done with. And um, I bought a longer one. And I don't know how I feel about this one. I think it's just like a stupid for my face. The horseshoe barbells are the ones that are easy to flip up, easy to hide. I feel like they're the easiest to take care of. I don't know. However, they are always crooked all the time. No matter what you do, they're crooked. You think they're not? They are. But these are pretty much my favorite kind. This is what I prefer. Love it. My stomach is growling. Can you hear that? Oh my god. The next one that I've seen used a lot are the captive bead rings. Basically the way these work is this little ball pops out. I can't do it because I'm very weak. Um, but that would pop out. I would recommend having these put in and changed by a piercer if you want one of these in because some of these are not very flexible and are really hard to bend and when you get them in your nose and you have to bend them into the right place, it's impossible. And then it's really hard to get the ball back in. So if you want one of these in your face, have your piercer do it probably, unless you think you can do it at home and you're a little more ballsy than me. Um, but these ones are super cute. They, they're the ones that just go like all the way around. like. This is not what this is, but like, you know, they would just be like a circle in your nose like that. Pretend that this one goes all the way around. I don't want to change this one right now. And then the last type of jewelry that I have besides like the different kind of retainers and the ones that are like, you know, look like this, um, are clickers. I have two clickers right now. This is my favorite one. I have another one that my friend bought me, which is a size too big and I'm really just too scared to put that one in yet. I don't want to stretch my septum just yet. That makes me really nervous. Um, but I had another one, but I dropped it down the drain. But the way that these ones work is you put them in your nose and then this thing here comes down and clicks into place like that. And they're really hard to take out, really hard. But I feel like those are the three most common types of jewelry. You can also get retainers that you can just put in there to keep it open and you can't see them. And then there's ones that are shaped, um, I'll just put a picture here. My friend has one of those. I don't have one, but they're interesting. You can also get ones that are like the circular barbell, but they're like segment rings where a whole segment of it comes out so you can put it in and pop that one back on. And then you can also get ones that just bend open and you put them in and then they bend back into place rather than clicking like that. I don't use those because I don't like bending things while they're in my body. Just not something I'm comfortable with. But those are some more that you can get. I get most of my septum jewelry either from Etsy or from Body Candy. I don't really know how good of an idea it is, but I've never died yet. Haven't died, also haven't gotten an infection, so I think I think I'm I'm think I'm safe for now. What else do I have written down? Now I'm gonna go over some of the pros and cons. Some of these things I've already talked about, some of these things I haven't, but Let's do it. Gonna go over the pros first. First pro is that there's no scarring, so it's pretty low commitment. If you hate it, you can just take it out, not worry about the scarring, and it's great. Sure, it's $35 out the window, but a plus side to that situation is that there are so many faux septum rings to choose from. So many. There are hundreds, thousands, quadrillions of fake ones that you can try to get a feel for if you're gonna like it or not on yourself and if you don't then you don't have to get it done and if you do then you'll probably like a real one too. Septums also have a huge range of jewelry and in my opinion have some of the cutest jewelry. Like for nose rings you can get like stars and moons and stuff but for septums you get like you this massive array of just gorgeous jewelry and 
Um, but I feel like you can never really get bored because you can always just get something bigger, more flashy, exciting, more dainty, more like it can be whatever you want it to be. It can be cute and dainty or it can be really bold and in your face and I just think that they're very versatile which is so great. Very easy healing process, really hard to infect and super easy to hide if you need to do that for any reason. Since there's such a wide array of jewelry it looks cute on everybody because you like it can be it can be anything. It, there is something for everybody when it comes to septum piercings and they are so cute. On everybody in my opinion I've never seen somebody look horrible with one I don't know I think they're adorable and then we'll get into this in another video but they are very easy to change I'll show you guys I mean depending on the jewelry clickers are kind of a bitch but um, otherwise very easy to change very quick and painless and you know okay now we're gonna move into the cons and the number one thing that everybody complains about with septum rings is the smell it's disgusting every now and then you're gonna get some really nasty dead skin build up around your septum ring and you're gonna smell something and you're gonna be like who here is dead it's your face that stinks pro is nobody else can smell it it's just you but it's right there so that's gross um but luckily really easy to fix just go clean it get some hot water move it around a little bit um and then it's fine another thing is that it's pretty annoying when you're sick um during the healing process not really anymore but um Something that people ask is, does it feel different when you blow your nose? And it's like, I can, I can do this. This is like, this doesn't, it doesn't hurt. The only thing that I would say to be careful about when you have it is, um, you know how when you blow your nose, sometimes you pull down to try to like wipe all your snotties off of your nose? Don't do that. So that is one thing that it can be pretty annoying when you're sick and can be pretty easy to irritate if you happen to tug on it or bump it. Um, it can get pretty sore pretty easily. I've heard a lot of people say that when they are somewhere really, really cold, their nose starts to ache because the metal gets so cold and irritates their nose. I've never experienced that, but I've heard a lot of people have, so I just thought that I would share that just in case that's something that you would want to know. I don't know. I've never had that problem. The last con that I would say is just the comments that people will give you, but I don't really experience that too often. Like I know a lot of people tend to be like, you look like a bull, but I've actually never really gotten that comment besides from like maybe one or two people. The only other comment that I've gotten was from a woman who came in while I was working and she walked up to me and she was like, can I ask you a question? And I was like, yeah, what's going on? And she was like, why the fuck would you do that to your face? And I was like, <laughs> I didn't know what to say. Um, but just, yeah, septum piercings are one of those things that a lot of people don't understand but that's typically the older generation and it's probably fine so make sure you kind of have a little bit of a thick skin before getting any piercing really any piercing that's not like your ears or your nostril or your, like your belly button or something everybody's like why would you do that and it's like because i hate myself probably but yeah i think that's everything that i wanted to go over for this video i had you guys ask me questions and i tried to answer all of them like in it as opposed to just like reading off your questions and answering them so I hope that was helpful. If you have any other questions, feel free to comment them down below. I read every single one of my comments, so even if you see this video a year ahead of time and you're like, oh man, I'm too late, no, I will probably see it and I will answer it. Just, I'll respond to all the comments on this if you have a question. Do not worry. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I promise, probably, that I will have the video on how to change it and going over all the different types of jewelry and stuff later. I just want to have all of that planned out and make sure that I'm not spreading misinformation so yeah that'll be up within the next week next couple of weeks probably hopefully cross your fingers um but i love you guys so so much i hope you enjoyed this video please do not forget to leave this video a big old thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already i would love for you to stick around i put out new videos every wednesday and i'm trying to start uploading on fridays as well i want to start doing two videos a week i don't know how it's gonna work but i want to do it so yes thank you so much for watching i love you guys so so much and i will see you in my next video bye